Caleb here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Today we've got this the Lore Mandolin and for a bit of a setup, you know, get it as good a plane as we can get it and a little bit of a customization we're going to do on it. I'll get into that later, but we're going to start on the setup. First thing I'm going to do is get the strings off of here. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of level and frets and I've noticed they're kind of sharp, so we're going to work on that first, I think. Alright, so I got all the strings off of it, and I got the bridge off of it. I'm ready to start leveling these frets. I don't think there's going to be too much to this. Well, before I do anything, let's check. I think it looks good. A little bit of a drop off there at the end, but it's straight, so that's good. Alright, now that I checked that the fretboard was straight, and it is, I'm going to level these frets. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot to do here. They don't look real worn. But the big thing I'm going to do is try to knock those edges off with this file. Well, that's probably all I'm going to do there. That's a lot better. Now I'll get the crowning file out and crown them again. So I finished off the frets by polishing them. I sanded them with 400, 600, 1200, and then I used the semi-chrome polish and polished them up. I cleaned the fretboard up a little bit, and then I put some of the Be Good oil on here. And it's looking really good. Something else we were asked to do was make an antler saddle for this, so I went ahead and done that. And it sits on there real good. So that's made. Uh, the one other thing was to finish the felt on the tailpiece. There was a piece in the bottom you can see. I'm going to go ahead and stick a piece to the top. Well, now that we've done most of the things we need to do before the strings, I've got the strings on it so we can start working on a setup on it. Uh, the strings I used were the GHS LS250s. 
something steel. And I know Jerry really likes those strings, so that's what I picked out for this. I started working on tuning them up. Still got a ways to go. So I'm going to go ahead and get this tuned up. I'm not going to show just me tuning this mandolin, but when I do tune it up, we're going to check the string height. It looks like it's probably going to be low. And that's all right. And I'll check the string height at the saddle and the nut, but we'll do that once we get this tuned up. Well, I've got all the strings on here, and they're up to pitch. It plays really well, actually, right now. I think the action might just be... a bit too low. Uh, I'm still holding the purple pick well up past the 12th fret. Well, for a little ways. And it buzzes just a little bit. So I think I'm going to raise the action a little bit more. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to loosen the strings just slightly. So now that the strings are loosened, I can just turn this little thumb wheel. Let's see if I can show it. There you can see it underneath the saddle. I can just turn that just a little bit and it should raise that saddle up. And really I noticed that it's more of a problem on the base side right now, so I'm going to raise it a little bit more. Or I'm actually just going to raise it. I'm not going to raise the treble yet. So now i got to tune this back up to pitch. Well, this is looking a lot better. I got this back up to pitch and now this slides under where it should and gets stuck where it also should. I'm real happy with the way this is turning out. I've already checked the intonation and I think it's good. Um, I'll probably check it again before we finalize this. But I think we're just about done with the setup part of this. The uh, one other thing we're going to do is make a new truss ride cover for it. Um, the customer that sent us this mandolin Send it with a little bit of a story. This mandolin belonged to his daughter who died of breast cancer a few years ago. Um, he was looking to have it put up in playing condition and put a little bit of personalization for her. Put her name somewhere and put it in pink. So I think what we're going to do is make a truss rod cover and engrave it with her name and fill it with some pink. I think most of what I'm going to do is on the laser cutter. Here is the truss rod that came off of here. I'd like to make one kind of like it. I haven't exactly decided how I'm going to go about doing that yet. Most of what I'm going to do is going to, on the laser cutter. I'll try to show what I can. But um, you have the idea. If I can't show much, you'll understand why. It's kind of hard to show what I'm doing on the laser cutter because it's mostly on the computer. So I'm going to get started on that. Alright, so we're over at Jerry's computer at Jerry's desk, and you can see I've got this program, it's called Inkscape, pulled up. And it is what we use to make all of the designs that we end up cutting on the laser cutter. You can see I've got the shape of the truss rod cover, and that is the same shape as the truss rod cover that it came with. And the way I did that was I actually took uh, the original truss rod cover and to the printer and used the scanner, just scanned it, and then I put it on this program and had it trace it so it's the same shape. This one is a little bit bigger. I mean, very, very minor difference, but I thought a little bigger might look a little better. You can see I've already got Ashley's name in it. I think I'm actually going to get rid of the two screw holes before I cut this. So that is actually what it will cut. Well, I'm going to change how it cuts these things on the... The way the laser cutter cuts is it cuts along red lines and then it engraves along blue lines, but it engraves all of what's filled black. So I think I need to fill this black so it will engrave all of the name and cut 
the outline. So I've got this piece of, I think it's rosewood. It, I don't know that for sure it was in the pieces of stuff that Jerry had used for cutting on the laser cutter before. Anyways, it looks really nice. It's dark and it's the right size. You can see I can fit the old truss rod cover on there and then there's a little bit of room to play. So this is what I'm going to use to make that out of. I don't have a lot more of this, so I really got one good take at this. The first thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to use the laser cutter, turn it on a really low setting and basically just print this on a piece of paper so I can see where it's going to be. That way I can line this up with where it is on the paper so I know it'll line up perfect. So we'll do that first. So we just moved the laser cutter into the shop out of the office and when we did that we've uh, kind of changed a few things about how it works. The bed is now adjustable to get your workpiece at the right height but to do that you have to use this a bar thing that Jerry made. So you set that on here. See I can see that I'm the table is too high because it's lifting it off of the side bars. So I turn this to whichever way is gonna let me go down. The bottom of this is the optimal height for cutting in the laser cutter. It's where the laser is most focused. So if my piece is sitting right here uh, the paper it's going to be on, and then the sacrificial board underneath of it. I should be just touching it. I think there is right where I want it. Solid in the center. So, I can now take this piece out. The top of my work piece is right where it needs to be to get the most focused laser. So, now I can move it up into the corner where I'm going to use it. Because the whole bed is moved. first thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to put this piece in yet because I'm going to do a kind of a test cut to see where it lines up on the piece of paper that's in there. I'll try to bring you over and show you. So that's the inside of the bed there. I gotta turn the whole thing on. So that you can see probably it says 16.3 and that's the laser power display as a percentage. So we're going to turn that way down to about 8.5. That way it doesn't cut through the paper, it just kind of burns an imprint in the paper. So now we'll go back to here. And I'll come over to the computer, load up the file, then if I hit cut, it should mark it except for didn't. So I'm going to turn the power up. There we go. Well, I told it to go ahead and engrave the name on the paper, but I don't know if it's got enough power to do that. We'll see how that turns out. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and open this up. I don't know how well the camera's going to pick it up, but I can see it. There you can see at least the outline, and I was changing the power as we went to try to get some of the name on there. So basically what I'm going to do is take my piece of wood here, and it should entirely overlap it. And it does. So now that the wood's in there, I can close this back up. Then I'll turn the power back up to well, something much higher. Here's 18.5, and then basically I'll try to cut it again. I'm hoping that cuts all the way through it. Alright, so the problem is that if I move it, I can't cut it again. I don't think I cut all the way through. I'm going to go ahead and cut it one more time. That's definitely cutting all the way through because that's the paper that's burning. So, now that that's cut all the way through, we can work on the engrave. I'm going to turn the power down for the engraving part. Turn it down to about 12. Well, we're back at my desk, and here's 
the truss ride cover. I think it turned out really good. It's a good thing I oversized it because it ended up being almost the exact same size as the old one. So we're going to probably fill the gaps next. Um, Jerry's got some filler that he uses and it's white. I think if we mix a little bit of red in we can make it a nice pink. Uh, once we get that done then we can sand the whole thing flat. And that engraving went pretty deep actually. Which is good because that means we can sand it and not have to worry about hitting the bottom. You know, besides that, putting two holes in this shouldn't be too difficult because I got this to line it up with. And, you know, they'll be out of the way of the name. I think that'll look really good. We'll probably put a little bit of finish on that too. But, you know, I'll worry about that later. I need to find out what Jerry did with his filler. You can see I've got a lot of pink here. I've got the stuff that Jerry uses to fill these usually, the white stuff. And I've put you know, a little bit of red dye in there. And then I was using this plastic scraper to get it on the top. I'm going to try to take off any excess. Maybe not using the side with the pink all over it. Because I've gotten it everywhere at this point. But it's definitely pink and I think it's filled the name. I can kind of see it. It's starting to set. So I guess I'm really just going to find a place for this to sit and totally set up. It'll probably be tomorrow before I can go ahead and sand this. But basically I'll just let this totally set and then we'll sand all the stuff off the top and all the stuff that's down in the engraving part will still be there and still be pink. So I'll set this down. Go set this somewhere where somebody's not going to walk into it and then try to get this place cleaned up a little bit. Well, I've gone ahead and cleaned this up. I didn't wait overnight, but I did wait quite a while and I noticed it was really setting up. The problem I had was it was setting up really light. It basically turned back white. So I've done my best to uh, make it turn back to pink. And it's a very bright pink, but I do think it's looking good. I'm actually fairly happy with this. I still got a little bit of cleanup to do in a couple of spots, but I think this is almost done. And we are going to clear coat this. I think I'm just going to clear coat this with the true oil. I'm not quite sure whether I should drill. I should probably drill my screw holes first. So I'll bring you back at some point and show you something. Well, after a couple of coats of finish and some polishing, I think this is ready to go on the mandolin. Well, I think we're ready to wrap Ashley's mandolin up. I'll give you a good look here. That truss rod cover I think is looking really good on there. Thing, our new antler saddle and our new setup and I think it's set up really well set up well. I'll have to hand it off to Jerry to make sure. <laughs> you know, he's the little more discerning mandolin player, but it's looking pretty good. I went ahead and uh, waxed the top while I had the wax out. I was using it on the pressure cover as well. I think it just cleans it up a little bit. I can see a little bit of smudge there I'll have to wipe off. But I think we're just about done with this thing. I'm going to play it just a little bit more. Try to get some good sound out of it.
hope you enjoyed us watching setting this mandolin up and making this nice truss rod cover. So I think this uh, mandolin will do what it was, what we were asked of it well. Should carry on Ashley's memory with her family so long as they keep this mandolin. I think it's a very nice touch that we've added here. If you enjoyed watching this video, a thumbs up would be much appreciated. And even more appreciated would be a subscribe. So, I guess we'll get this mandolin on its way. Thanks for watching. My friends, this little Ashley mandolin, and I call it an Ashley as in the girl that owned it. I'm sure Melissa has told you the story about it, and I'm sure Caleb has shown you the little truss rod cover there that he did with her name on it. And uh, they tell me that the letters are in pink, and I'm just taking their word for that. <laughs> But uh, it looks really nice and not very nice job. The setup on it is really nice too. So let's play just a little bit on it to see what it sounds like. Sounds like a nice little mandolin. Feels, feels real good, plays real easy. Caleb did a nice job. Well, I think it's a, a real nice little mandolin. I hope the family will be happy with the work we did on it. You know, I wish them all well, because I know what this mandolin means to them, and I can certainly understand that. little mandolin. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.